All right, welcome to part two. And in this one, we're gonna talk about rigging up the car and how to do that properly. So first things first, uh, we need to go through all these parts and make sure that massless is checked, but then make sure the mass part is not checked. So only the mass part should not be massless because that's what's gonna control our mass. Second thing we need to do is set the collision properties of the car. So we only want some things to actually collide with anything, and those objects are the physical wheel items and the body. Everything else we don't want to collide with anything. So I'm going to select the wheels. These are the wheel meshes and the mass and platform. And I'm going to set can collide false. I'm also going to go to the body. I'm going to set the collision fidelity to hull. I'm going to save that. Now another thing we need to do before we rig is we need to make sure that the physical wheels actually don't collide with the body of the car. And the way we can do that is through collision groups. So this is a tab right here under the model uh, tab right here. We can click on collision groups and we get this box here. And we can add a group by clicking plus add group and we're going to call one car body and another one we're gonna call a car wheel. And then where they come together, car body and car wheel, we wanna uncheck that, which means that the car wheel will not collide with car body parts. But now we actually have to assign parts to those groups. So select the body of the car, and then on the car body group, hit the plus button, and that will add it to that group. And then on the physical wheels, select all of those, and then on a car wheel, click the plus button, and that will add those to there. Save that off again. So now we've got our collision properties all set up and ready to go. All right, so the next part is probably the most difficult part of this whole process, but it's also the most important, and that is are the constraints. So this is what's gonna set up our, uh, our basically our car suspension, you could say and also allow for steering. Okay, so what we wanna do here is hide things that we don't really care about seeing at the moment. So that would be the wheel meshes and the body and the mass. And we'll just set the transparency to one to hide them. So now we see the physical wheels and we see the platform and that's it, and that's good. So now we need to create our constraints. So the magic of this whole system is gonna be based on the cylindrical and the spring constraints. So we're gonna create those first and then we're gonna kind of position and name them. It's a little bit of a tedious process, so follow along. So first thing we're gonna do is create the cylindrical constraints. So it's very important that we start by creating the first attachment on the platform above. Don't start on the wheel, start on the platform. So click somewhere near the wheel. Again, position doesn't matter a whole lot. We're gonna programmatically set that soon and then click on the wheel somewhere here. Now, by default, it's it might actually add that attachment to the wheel mesh. So if I go to my front left wheel here, we'll see that the attachment went into the wheel mesh, but we really need that attachment into the physical wheel. So if that happens, drag that attachment into the physical wheel. That's really important. Move the attachment from the wheel to the physical wheel. And then, under, when we have that attachment selected, go under position and zero out the Y and Z axes. And then we need to rinse and repeat. So create this wheel again. And then I will go to the front right wheel, move that attachment to the physical wheel, zero out the Y and Z to get that centered. And then we're gonna do the same for the rear wheels. Okay, so now that we have the cylindrical constraints created, next we create the springs. So select spring there and then select the same exact attachments. Don't create any new ones. Just click on the existing attachments and then connect them. 
Again, start at the top on the platform, and then the second one will be the wheel. Okay, so now we have the constraints created that we need. The next thing we need to do is name them appropriately based on where they are. So this is a bit tedious. So I'll do the first one and then I'll skip the rest. So on the front left wheel, we wanna follow the same naming schema that we were for the wheels. So for instance, wheel and then the suffix was uh, FL for front left. So for attachment zero here, we wanna name it attachment FL for front left. Same thing with the cylindrical constraint there. So uh, cylindrical, we'll get rid of the constraint and name it front left. And for the spring, we'll name it spring front left. And I will do that for the other ones and skip forward to that. All right, so I have set all the names here appropriately. So the next thing we wanna do is change the position and orientation of these constraints appropriately. This is a very important step again. All these steps are very important. Um, this attachment needs to be vertically aligned with this one. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we're gonna actually script it out again. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna set the world position of this one to the same as this, only on the X and Z axes. And we will keep the Y axis the same. So this is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna use our same commands as before. Uh, and then we're gonna run this command here. So what's happening here is we're taking the first selection, which again is the attachment at the top, and we're setting its world position to a new vector three, where the X one and the Z are the same as this attachment, but the Y is the same as itself. So we don't move it on the Y axis. So copy all that, we'll paste it down here, and then select this one first, and then this one second, and then hit enter, and they're aligned. All right, and then rinse and repeat. So select the top one first, and then the second one, hit enter. Second first, second first. Okay, so one thing to note, it's very important that we get those orders right when we're running these commands because this script by default is not adding itself into the undo history. So if you mess up on something and you try to undo it, it's, it's actually gonna screw everything up and uh, that's not gonna be good. So be very careful when you're using these commands here. There is a way to add these things into our undo history, uh, but there's just a lot more bloat that is not worth dealing with at the moment. All right, so now that we have the positions correct, now we have to set the orientation or rotation of these constraints appropriately. So when we select one of these constraints, one thing you'll notice are these arrows. So look very carefully. So we have an orange arrow going to the right and a yellow arrow going down. So what we need to do is get this, these arrows actually pointing to the left and forward. So for this first attachment on the front left wheel, in this instance, I'm going to set, first I'm gonna zero out the orientation. I'm gonna set the X axis to 90 and the Y axis to 180. And you'll see now the orange arrow is forward and the yellow arrow is pointed out. And that's what we want. So the yellow arrow should point outward from the car and the orange arrow should point forward. Now when you put 180 here, it might set it to negative 180. Don't worry about that, it's the same thing. So for this one over here, I'm gonna zero it out. In this case, we want negative 90 and then 180. And then actually the rear ones are gonna be the same on each side. So this one's gonna be negative 90, 180. And this one is 90, 180. Okay, so now we have the orientation set. Now we have to set the inclination angle. So you see this little disc that goes around the attachment? That's showing the, basically the angle that it wants to hook up the wheel. 
And as you can see, imagine that cylinder is the wheel. That's not correct. So we need to fix that. So select the cylindrical front left and rear left. And we're gonna go down to the inclination angle. We're gonna set that to negative 90. And now you'll see that disc is vertical. And then select the front right and rear right and set it to positive 90. Okay, so now that we've done that, now we need to configure our springs appropriately. Select all the springs, and you can select a lot if you click at the top and then hold shift and click the bottom one, it'll select all in that row. So our spring values right now are not sufficient for what we need. So we're gonna set the damping to 500 and we're gonna set the stiffness to 10,000. So we have to add a zero to it. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to the appearance and we're gonna deselect visible because during runtime, we don't want our springs to be visible. All right, so next we're going to set our transparency back to normal. So I select our car, I'm gonna select the wheels I'm just gonna select everything. So let's uh, collapse everything here. I'm just gonna select everything, <clears throat> set its transparency to zero. And then I'm gonna go through and the platform, the mass, and the physical wheels we want to hide. Set so that to one. And now we have a rigged car. So if I go to play, we'll see our car suspension. So you might see it looks a little weird there. So what's up with that? We can go into it and configure it. So we go to chassis, platform, go to our springs. Uh, and there we go. So we see the free length is a little different there on each side. So we probably want to change that a little bit. So maybe free length is two for all of it. So that looks decent, that seems to work okay. So we can stop, go back to the springs, set them to two for the free length, save, and click play again. Okay, so that's a little better. We can test it out, we can put it in the air and drop it and see the suspension work. So one last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a wedge, anchor it, We'll set its material to concrete and just make some sort of ramp. Just let it slide down. Click play again. Put the car on the ramp and let it roll down. And just like that, we have a car rigged with our suspension. So the next video is we're gonna go into actually scripting this thing to work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a vehicle seat to it to allow you to enter into the car and then allow you to drive around.